of a belief, self-talk. The power of a belief, self-talk. Your belief, self-talk is powerful, and we all have one. Your belief, self-talk is powerful. And I believe that the truth that is on display in your life, it is directly related to your belief, self-talk. What are you telling yourself? Now, is life about what happens to you? I say the answer is no. I think life is ultimately about how do we respond to things that happen to us in life. You have conditions in life. And there are certain conditions that you cannot change. There are certain conditions in life that you just cannot change. You can work a lifetime trying to change certain conditions, but you cannot change certain things about your life. I mean, in today's time, we find individuals who are born with a certain anatomy, born in a certain way, and they'll spend a million dollars going to the doctor trying to see if they can be made differently. There are certain conditions in life we just cannot change. Certain things that the doctors just cannot face. So there are certain conditions in life. The other thing we see is that there are certain cognitions. And the last thing is, life is about choice. Jesus gave this man a choice. Now what are you going to do? You're going to stand here and keep asking me to come when I told you I will not come? Now, are you going to condemn me? Are you going to fight me? Are you going to tell me how bad I am? Are you going to pout and cry? Are you going to have self-pity? What, what are you going to do? Or are you going to take me at my word, go forward in the direction of the blessing, and believe that the breakthrough will happen in your life? What will you do? So choice is very, very powerful. Cognitions are very, very powerful. And conditions are very, very powerful. But I want to push these two away. And I want you to look right here at cognitions. And cognitions are those things, are those thoughts deeply embedded in your mind that influence in the greatest way your will. Now, you still make choices, but it's the cognitions, and the cognitions in some sense could be your library, if you will. Could be your resource book of materials that you have deep inside of your mind. Your, your library, your cognitions could be the, 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 the physician's manual that allows him or her to see prescriptions and symptoms and prescriptions for those symptoms. Well, it's your book of truth that's in your mind. And it's from that book of truth that you make what? You make choices. Now, you're going to have conditions in life, conditions that you cannot change. And what happens in your life is ultimately going to be a result of the choices you make. But these choices you make are going to most be influenced by your cognitions, by those things that are deep within your being. Now, one of the things that we do in life, we, and can I say me, one of the things I do in life, and one of the things I'm seeking to work through on a daily basis, is what I call irrational thoughts. Or somebody else might call it stinky what? Thinking. Just, just irrational thoughts. Things that are not true, but that we make them true. What are, what are some examples? One example could be an absolute. No one loves me. No one? That's, a, that's an absolute. Everybody hates me. Everybody hates you. The whole world is against me. The entire world is against you. Even the people who do not even know your name would not recognize you by face. And so that's an example of an absolute that can just destroy your life. And because it's a cognition of, of irrational thoughts that lacks objective reality facts, and now you finna make a decision based on choice. I tell individuals who work with me, because we all work together, no one works for me, everybody works for Jesus Christ, but I tell everybody who works for me, works with me, do not give me bad information. You can give me any information you want, but just don't give me bad information. Because I make decisions based on information. So if you give me wrong information, now I'm going to arrive ultimately at a false conclusion. And so it's very, very powerful. So I want you to look at the power of the belief self-talk. 
I'm moving fast because we don't have much time here on this video. The other thing I want you to see here about the belief self-talk, listen, I'm going to give you a miracle blessing today that's going to allow you to feel better. All right, your emotional health and your behavior are strongly linked to the thoughts that are in your mind. Strongly linked to the thoughts that are in your mind. Now, you, you, you think right now about someone that you believe hates you or desires to harm you. Now, what do you think that emotion is going to be? And what do you think that behavior is going to be? You're going to just sit there and twiddle your thumb and smile? No. If you think this person hates you and this person desires to bring great destruction upon your life, that's a certain behavior you're going to have. Well, now, there's another person who's a person of safety, who's a person that you recognize, who's a person that has a pattern of bringing good and blessings and positivity into your life. Now, what's going to be your emotional response to not that person, not that person, but your thought about that person, your thinking as it pertains to that person is going to produce certain emotions in your being, and then that oftentimes has a strong bearing on the behavior that we produce in our lives. So I want you to see the miracle of God allowing us to see this man's mind on display and how he went through the different phases and the different levels. I want you to see it. I want you to get it. I, I want you to study this week. Go online. There's some handouts there. There's some uh, video downloads. You can call us on Thursday no matter where you are in the country. And you can talk to me directly, and we can have a live conference call. But listen, I want you to grow. I want you to get to the next level in God. And the best tool I know to get to the next level in God is to have a deep study on the miracles of Jesus Christ. Again, this week, we've been studying the nobleman's son, John chapter 4, verses 46 through 54. God bless you, my prayer.